Good evening, everybody. Happy Thursday. This is Tim Bip Live. We are live and alive. That is right. We are here. I am back. Oh, that's uh, just hitting wrong buttons. thing all over the place aren't aren't I goodness gracious goodness gracious goodness gracious how are we tonight how is everybody hope you're doing well hope you've had a great week hope you're hanging in there oh my goodness it is good to be with you I am finally not as stopped up as I was this time last week the weather in Lexington, Kentucky is cloudy and rainy, definitely mostly overcast, but not nearly as crappy as it was supposed to be, according to the forecast from earlier this week. We were predicted to have some terrible storms, and we luckily did not have any today. Cannot say as much for our friends to the south, our neighbors just south of the border. But luckily, we did not suffer nearly the atrocities that others did. Thank goodness. But I hope things are well in your neck of the woods. I hope that you have had a good week. I hope you're drinking good bourbon. I hope that you are just having a grand old, grand old time. Tax season is nearly over with. I hope you have finished up your taxes. I, for one, have not. That is what this week uh, is for. I am finishing them up this weekend. I am stressed to the max about them. I wish I had done them much earlier, but this has been a very stressful uh, season. For, uh, for the Pear Bear. But that is just part of it. So, just as anything, I am scrambling last minute to complete yet another project. I feel like I'm back in school again. I want to say howdy to the folks who are already here. Sugar Kitty kicking out the stream with our currently lone moderator. So y'all behave. Please do not go astray. Make sure that you do not cause too much trouble for Sugar Kitty. Thank you so much for being here. Sugar Kitty says meow kicking things off. It is so good to see you. Old WP Wilmington Piper. Good to see you. Old Dashy Bun. Hello, Dash. Hope you've had a great week of school. WP also says cheers and finishing the last of my grin, a Green River Weeded. I am actually going to be cracking a, uh, here it is, a fresh bottle here in a bit. Be pouring up. Uh, all four of their expressions that they have on the market here in just a bit. Have not gotten around to having anything quite yet to enjoy today. But I've also uh, been so, I've just been largely cutting back in general recently since I have been starting. Uh, this new medicine, I don't know if I've talked about it on uh, stream recently, but uh, started a weight loss supplements through HIMS uh, about three and a half weeks ago. And they are doing uh, wonders to uh, curb not only my appetite and help me lose some weight, uh, but also curb those cravings for whiskey. So I'm just shedding those pounds, boys. Don't know. I I, I don't quite know. I I haven't weighed myself 
uh, in a in a while, uh, but I feel like I've I've lost a good five or so pounds so far. Um, it looks like it at the very least. So uh, I will I'll, I'll probably do that before too long. The goal uh, is to be down to about two hundred by the time a uh, new baby girl is born in September. And I do believe that that is a good, uh, reasonable goal to reach by then. Some other updates as well. Uh, this past Sunday, went live on Twitch and only Twitch to stream the beginning of a series uh, that I'm doing. Uh, and that series will remain uh, as far as I am uh, currently concerned on Twitch because it is video game uh, centered where I will be trying out um, and and learning uh, alongside uh, uh, a viewing audience uh, Minecraft for the first time. So uh, from time to time, I'll be streaming over on twitch.tv slash my bourbon gamer. My my uh, my slow and steady journey, trying to understand uh, the wonderful world of uh, of Minecraft. I am loving it so far. I'm spending some time on my own, uh, just trying to brush up on some some crafting skills uh, and understanding uh, just some general mechanics of the game. GT Mustang, hello GT Mustang. It's good to see you in the chat. I hope you're doing well. It has been a minute, but it's very good to see you. Hope you've had a good week. Hope you're drinking something nice. Happy Thursday to you. But yeah, those uh, those video game streams are kind of limited to uh, weekends and when Eden is taking a nap in the afternoons, so... Count on those times uh, being things are going well, GT. I, I appreciate that. Things are going very well. Uh, I I deleted the uh, the image from my uh, my overlays on OBS, but uh, we are uh, we are expecting our second child. Got a bun in the oven. Due in September. Very excited. Gonna be a, a, a girl dad through and through. Which is crazy to think about. But I think I'm well suited for it. I think I'm I think I'm built for it for sure. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh but if you want to uh make sure that you do not miss those video game streams. Uh, head over to twitch.tv slash my burden gamer uh, and make sure that you are following. You get those notifications uh, every time I go live over there. And if you want to alternatively watch, uh, oh, our B drive system is uh, activating. And it uh, had a little bubble. Uh, we've only been in this house since September and I've uh, only heard it go off twice the entire time that we've been here. Uh, but it's done an excellent job in keeping our house uh, dry and safe, which is nice. Uh, what was I about to say? Oh, yeah. Uh, streaming on Twitch. <coughs> if you'd prefer to watch over there, um, feel free to. Uh, it also, I'm, I'm trying to bump up numbers on Twitch as well. Uh, to make that an alternative streaming platform. Just in case things go sideways with YouTube one day. I like to like to have the option there. You know what I'm saying? I like your puppet in the background and I will follow on Twitch. Thanks, Dash. Uh, the puppet in the background is the professor from Puppet History on uh, on YouTube. From the guys over on Watcher. 
great show. Wonderful, wonderful show. Uh, but his compatriot over there as well is one Snuffleupagus, the patron saint of 10 Bip Live. You can support him and support the show by heading to the Stream Elements link, which is tagged, uh, pinned rather, at the top of the comment section, both on Twitch and on YouTube. That is our tipping method. We call those Snuffy Chats. That is our method of super chatting. All tips, all Snuffy Chats go to support the show. If you would like to do that, your message appears on the top left-hand side of your screen. Read them out here on the show. Say a big thank you. They can be anonymous if you would prefer to do that. But regardless, just being here is very much appreciated. I love you. You're the best. But if that piques your interest, that is available for you as well. Uh, what will I name my second child? We have not decided yet. Um, we are working on uh, working on names for the second baby. Justin Fisher, it is so good to see you, my friend. Cheers, Perry. Haven't been able to pop in for a while. It is good to see you. I uh, I know why you are able to pop in now, and I am sorry it is under such circumstances, but uh, regardless, I am very, very happy to uh, to have your presence be felt, and uh, I hope that you're able to hang out a little bit more. <clears throat> WP with a snuffy chat says, cheers, Perry. Thank you, my friend. Good to see you, Justin. Uh, hope you're drinking some good bourbon. Hope you're enjoying what you can, how you can, any time you can at the moment. Ugh. Should get adjusted because what am I doing slouching? I'm working right now. I'm working. Uh, Sugar Kitty does say, help out Snuffy. He's a bit hungry. He is indeed. Look at him. He's famished back there. He's famished back there. Oops. Fuck. And the poor professor laying down next to him. Having a cumbersome but delicious pour this evening. Hoping it's uh, high proof. and Getting you where you need to go tonight. I should probably go ahead and uh, get my pours opened up, lined up. And ready to rock and roll. Max B, longtime pod listener, first time commenter, just saying howdy and join some Driftless Glen Cognac finish. Max B, thank you so much for being here. It is always wonderful uh, to have uh, longtime listeners show up for the first time. Driftless Glen Cognac finish, though. That sounds awesome. <clears throat> Cheers to you, Max B. Thanks so much for being here. Dash, where's your dad? I, I don't know. I'm assuming... I'm hoping he's he's home. Uh, with you. Or at least... He's... I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I... I I don't I don't have his location on my phone. Do you mean why is he not on stream? Do you want him to be on the stream? You want him to be on stream with me. Okay. I told him, maybe he'll maybe he'll hop on, and he and I can uh, he and I can stream together, cause that would be fun. I'm texting him. I'm letting him know.
Uh, for anybody who doesn't know, Dash is uh, Eric's youngest son. Uh, Eric the Whiskey Mutant, my uh, my co-host on this my bourbon podcast, my, my main show. It comes out every Wednesday on all podcast platforms, including here on YouTube, if that is how you are watching. Fourteen times. I'm trying to get him on, Dash. I'll see what I can do. All right, I am uh, I am getting poured up the full lineup of uh, products available through uh, the fine folks at Green River Distilling Company. I'll be kind of drinking on them uh, throughout the evening as we go through the news and talk about what is going on in the world of bourbon. Let me know what you are drinking on as well uh, in the chat. If you don't mind, I would love to hear what it is that you are What's your imbibing? What's your imbibing on? But anyway, uh, four bourbon, rye, weeder, and 119 proof, uh, well, full proof single barrel. This is a uh, single barrel available. Well, this one in particular was a liquor barn pick. 119? Yeah. This was liquor barn number four. I have not seen that. I'm drinking apple juice. There you go. Dashy knows what's up. Sipping Discovery 11, the Green River single barrels are solid. Um, Disco 11, is, is that the newest one or is that the one previous? I can't remember. I can't remember which one we, we had. Eric and I had one that was sent by uh, our buddy Tony Bagadoni. Tony Bag Donuts. And we loved it, but it, it, fantastic. Absolutely fantastic stuff. It is, 11 is the newest? Okay, cool. That rye bourbon, man. Bourbon Bites, Clifton, driving to Total Wine to pick up, pick up an order. Hello, my friend. It's good to see you. Hope you've had a good week. Thanks for stopping by the Minecraft stream on Sunday as well. <coughs> Things only got... Uh, only got... Well, they got better. They got better.
marginally, but I'll get there. I had spicy ramen with chicken today. It was really good. That sounds awesome. I scarfed uh, two cold pieces of pizza before I got on stream. That does sound really delicious, though, Dash. I'm, I'm not going to lie. All right, while we're waiting for Eric, we are going to uh, go ahead and start talking about some of the news. It does sound like he is going to be uh, joining us. Uh, so I will, uh, yeah, here we go. Uh, starting with this, uh, I had spicy Indonesian ramen for lunch. Nice with all the sauces and a few scallions on top. Oh, that sounds so good. Uh, I, I, I've not really been eating as much because of the medicine uh, I've been on. Um, I haven't had fast food in like, I mean, really the whole time that I've been on the meds. And so, uh, and I haven't really craved them, craved it either, which is nice. Um, but ramen does sound just spectacular. Anyway. All right. News time. Reclaimed Maker's Mark barrel used in new Messermeister knife collaboration. I think this looks so friggin' dope. Messermeister in collaboration with Chef Edward Lee unveil limited edition chef knife as part of Forge initiative to give back. Limited edition Chef Edward Lee knife handcrafted by artisans in Japan. Features a reclaimed Maker's Mark bourbon barrel handle, an eight-inch black Damascus, Damascus, excuse me, steel blade to benefit the James Beard award-winning Lee Initiative. Knife features and specification: handles made from Maker's Mark whiskey barrel staves, Shusugi Ban uh, charred design on handle, homage to bourbon barrel torching process, 52-layered Japanese black Damascus steel. Uh, with VG10 core, razor sharp 15 uh, degree cutting angle. Handcrafted in Japan, limited edition, only 750 of, uh, available. Edward Lee's engraved uh, signature, overall length 13.78 uh, inch. Blade length 8. Point, uh, excuse me, 8.5 inches. Blade width at heel 1 and 7 8 inches. Uh, handle length 5 and 3 8 inch. Handle width at middle, one inch. Spine thick, thickness, 2.1 millimeters. I think this thing looks so friggin' dope. Um, of course, if you know anything, uh, any Bunbo Hui fans here? Indomie brand? Nice. Oh, wait, is that, are you talking about the, you're talking about the ramen, anyway. I don't care for VG10. Hard to sharpen and can chip easily. Interesting. Um, if you know anything about knife making, uh, and you know anything about the art of, uh, especially Japanese blades, uh, you know that even though they use the phrase Damascus steel or Damascus blade. Uh, the true art of bumbo hue is a Vietnamese soup. Oh, interesting. Uh, anyway, Damascus, the actual um, original art of Damascus steel is, uh, it has been lost to time uh, from ancient Japan. Uh, so what they are using to craft uh, this <clears throat> this knife uh, and knives that are similar to it uh, is uh, kind of an approximation 
of what uh, they they know Damascus Steel to be. Uh, but that being said, uh, this is a really, really cool looking knife. Uh, according to WP, though, this might be, you might be paying for name only and uh, the fact that it's a, a bourbon associated uh, kind of brand here. Uh, I think it looks just incredibly sick. Uh, it is a good looking knife. I mean, I can't, I can't deny that. Um, <clears throat> Chef Lee does have a new cookbook out. It's called Bourbon Land. Uh, came out on April second. Uh, I have, I, I interviewed. Um, golly, the knife is five hundred dollars. Uh, whew. He is a well known Kentucky chef. Yeah, uh, I got to interview him back in twenty. 18. Uh, it was the first time I interviewed Fred Minnick as well. It was a bonus episode uh, before. It was kind of my my way to cover Bourbon and Beyond um, before I got access to um, press credentials for Bourbon and Beyond, um, and. It it was it was a very awkward interview. I think it was one of the first ones I ever did with the podcast. I planned out like all of my questions. It was very different from how I interview now. <coughs> Excuse me. Fa is good too. Fa is fantastic. Uh, but Ed Ed Lee is just I. Uh, a class act through and through. Uh, it looks like 20% of the proceeds for the knife um, go to his foundation, uh, the Lee Initiative. Um, it's committed to advancing diversity, inclusion, and compassion within the culinary world uh, by contributing to this cause with every purchase. Customers not only acquire a high quality product, but also actively participate in promoting positive change within the restaurant industry and beyond. Y'all got me hungry for noodles now. I'm not gonna lie. Like noodles noodles sound dope right now. I shouldn't be hungry. Like there there's I am I I have eaten for the day. I don't need any more food. <laughs> but noodles sound good. There's a Japanese restaurant in Lexington that delivers ramen and there it it is always piping hot like no matter what it comes steaming steaming hot and i could crush it i mean i i would absolutely destroy some ramen right now some fried octopus balls with it too oh dude japanese food might be my favorite cuisine my mouth is lonely i mean that's why i that's why i drink bourbon at this time of night <laughs> to keep myself from uh eating too much at this point i feel like that's my reasoning i don't know Anyway, cool knife. Um, I'm not, I don't cook enough, uh, nor do I have that kind of money laying around to justify <clears throat> uh, that particular purchase. Uh, but it is a wonderful cause. I think they're, um, I think if you can, go for it. You know, it makes, if it makes sense for you. But, uh, very cool. Maker's Mark. Oh, wait. Hold on. I got to get caught up on chat. I love Asian and Mexican food the most right now. The cats love sushi. The human can't pay to eat most Japanese. That's a shame. <coughs> I will eat. I will eat just about any 
Hold on. This is a full. This is a full. I will eat literally just about any food. I'm not even. I'm not even joking. Like, it's realistically two hundred dollars over where it should be given the chef knife market. That's fair. I think considering the fact that they're they're charging that they're they're putting 20% of it back into his foundation. I think the $200 upcharge makes sense. Um because they are probably still trying to make a little bit of their overhead back on it. But regardless, yeah, I mean, I I get it. You know, what's what's twenty percent of hundred bucks? That's not right. Yeah, hundred bucks. I don't do math good. Okay. But anyway, um, food. I will. I will eat. I will eat the rawest fish eggs. I will shoot. I will shoot a, uh, a the the what is it like quail shooters, quail egg shooters. I will try I mean I will literally try any food once. I mean genuinely. I I am not afraid of trying food. It is my favorite thing to indulge in. Do I like century eggs? I have never had a century egg, but I am not opposed to it. I am I am not opposed to it. Um and the funny thing is, do you want to know where where all of my like my curiosity comes from? Ninety percent of my curiosity and like my I I would be okay with trying that comes from watching Good Mythical Morning, like like genuinely, um, and and slowly kind of like progressively trying, um, different different weirder foods. Um, the first time that I really realized, um, the Icelandic rotted shark, are you talking about, um, oh, balls, you're not talking about the, um, fermented fish, are you? Not Rackfisk. Surstreaming. Oh, Balut. No, I wasn't thinking of Balut. I mean, I, again, I would, I would give it a try. I would attempt it. I'm not saying that I would like it, and I would probably hate myself for it. <clears throat> the shark is different, but equally bad. I hear. Okay. I, I mean, sure. It probably is. It probably is. Like, I'm I'm sure that it is. I'm just like, I'm willing to give it that, that college try. I don't see why not. I only live once. But anyway, like, the, the first time I, like, I try, and, and it wasn't even that weird. But, like, we were at a slightly nicer uh, restaurant, Lucy and I were, and we ordered calamari. Lutfisk is Norwegian. That's lied fish. Hakari is shark, but the uh, put in the ground for a couple months. Interesting. Foodies derail Timbip. Yeah, for sure. But the thing is, like, I'm kind of a foodie myself, too. So, I mean, it's no big deal. I mean, I food is a big part of my life, too. So, and the thing is, I'm usually drinking when I'm eating. So, 
Uh, anyway, so we were at a slightly nicer restaurant, <clears throat> and we ordered calamari. And you know, up until that point, our experience with calamari was fried, and it basically came uh, like like breaded and fried, right? And it came. I don't. I don't, I wouldn't say that it was fried. It was probably closer to pan seared than anything and lucy couldn't handle it mostly because of the texture i was all about it i mean i i loved it and it it made me very quickly realize how much i love just in general that experience of uh that that kind of it's not even like specifically because of the texture of that seafood but i can i can easily get over it i guess um so it got me it got me to where i really love um oysters of course um i mean like i go i go back to that kind of stuff um My wife is a major texture person. Uh, texture person, yeah. I mean, Lucy, Lucy is too. It, it. She can't, she can't do anything that is even remotely like slimy and weird. Like it, it genuinely. She, she thinks it, it, it feels more like snot to her, and so she, she like wants to throw up. <laughs> so I am like, but it doesn't, it doesn't bother me. Like especially if it tastes good. And I'm 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 more adventurous with um, with what I I try to eat as well. So it's probably close to having solid Clorox on a stick. Hashtag ammonia bomb. That's funny. That's what I hear too. <laughs> hey, Dash says he likes any food. I can't eat any of the funky seafoods, but my German side, I can eat all the weirdness, the blood sausage, the ham hocks, souse, uh, and other things. Yeah, it, I'm... <sighs> Doesn't bother me. Love a good blood sausage, too. There we go. Doesn't bother me. All right, let's get back to the news. Sorry. Uh, Maker's Mark. Oops. Uh, Keeneland uh, launching a new 10-year Kentucky bourbon bottle series. Uh, when I first read this, read this, excuse me, uh, I thought this meant that, that we were going to be getting a 10-year bourbon uh, from Maker's Mark that was going to be released in conjunction with Keeneland. Not the case. They are going to be releasing a, a series of bottles over a 10-year period uh, in association with Keeneland. Boo, I know, but I still think the design, at least of the first one, is pretty cool. Uh, Maker's Mark Bourbon is kicking off a new 10-year bottle series with Keeneland that will celebrate greats of the gate, all-time great racehorses, and they are starting with Man of War, one of the most iconic of thoroughbreds, who will grace the first one. Uh, if you're not really a fan of horse racing, or at least if you're not from around uh, the Lexington or Kentucky area, uh, this name, Man of War, probably does not mean a whole lot to you. Man of War was one of the uh, most iconic and legendary racehorses. He won a Triple Crown, and he is most notably one of the few racehorses to be buried uh, full-bodied. Why specifically do we mention full-bodied? Uh, that is because most racehorses, uh, most horses in general, if they are not uh, well, used for alternative means by the time that they pass away, uh, they are just buried with uh, only their head. Uh, Man of War was considered so great and powerful that his entire body was buried. Very few horses uh, are buried that way. He was so uh, wonderful and powerful and cool uh, that he was, in fact, buried full body. 
Uh, but you will have to hold your horses to get a bottle. It won't be coming out until October, unlike previous special releases that arrived in April. The releases often were timed to the annual run into the Maker's Mark Mile, which is April 12th during the spring meet, with fans lining up to get bottles at liquor stores, then lining up again to get them signed at Keeneland Racecourse by sports luminaries from jockeys to University of Kentucky coaches and players. Here is the bottle. Let me open this up in a different uh, tab so you can get a get a better look at it. I think it's pretty sick. I think it's a pretty cool looking bottle, all things considered. I mean, it it's it's very like '90s Maker's Mark classicy kind of looking bottle, honestly. Now, of course, what's in the bottle is probably no different from their six to seven year old bourbon, 90 proof. But if you're a collector, especially of the unique and different Maker's Mark bottles uh, that go up, this is for you. This year, uh, there will not be a spring bottle signing, according to a news release from Keeneland and Maker's Mark. The bottles will come out in the fall at Kentucky retailers and benefit a variety of bluegrass non-profits. Now, before we go any further, I do believe that we need to say a uh, fond hello to <laughs> one Eric the Whiskey Mutant. Oh, oh, my, my. Oh, what do you mean? Boy, what do you mean? Boy. What are you doing? I don't, I don't, I don't even, even know, know what's what happening. Am I, am I echoing? echoing? Not, um, you know what? You probably are. So I got to turn something off. Hold on. Here there I am. Go. <laughs> I got double teamed. I got double teamed here. I was doing dishes. <laughs> I was doing dishes. Look who's happy to see you. Dash bun. All right, Dash bun. You got to chill out. Let dad do his do his thing here because <laughs> i i'm ready might as well post this uh, let's get some people going here let's post this may as well little... may as well oh what, what, what did, said yes too what did i uh what did i come into where, where are we at do you need me to just go on and take over from here what are uh, we doing i mean i'm i'm kind of i'm kind of uh steering the ship at the moment I know, but what are you? Where are you steering it from? To um, I'm steering it from this. Uh, there's uh, there's a, a new release, a new ten year release of uh, bottles from um, Maker's Mark with uh, oh Maker's Mark Dash. I told you, you got to stay up there. Marty Old Whiskey Nose says, "Cheers, guys. Cheers, buddy. Good to see you." Uh, anyway, let's just hop back in real quick here, Eric. Um, here's what the, the first bottle is going to look like. It's a man of war bottle. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Gold yellow wax there. Yeah. And it's, it's all going to be like different, uh, different race horses, <clears throat> different, different special. <coughs> you know, there race is horses. a, there is a release that has horses on it you know already bland blands no try again i don't know man i hate it when the when you do this try again <laughs> pin hook don't oh duh of course pin hook. try again what no just just tell me just don't do this i mean it's a total wine exclusive i mean you can pretty much only get it at total wine come on think of it somebody in the I'm, chat say it say I'm it blanking. Jo joseph brazos in the chat i'm surprised that he can see the chat i'm surprised he knew how to pull up a chat on the internet okay all right john cal perry well i see you on the screen there joe it's good to see you thank you for being here chess nut Oh right, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, that's the... Uh, there. <clears throat> The first three years of the series will support Kentucky Harvest Arts Center of the Bluegrass in Danville and Bluegrass Farms Charities. The Man of War bottle will support construction of a new food pantry at the Thoroughbred Center on Paris Pike, Keeneland's for, uh, year-round training facility uh, to help horse industry workers. Don Nishida just slipping into the chat as well. What's going on? What's happening here? Donnie. What is this? Donnie. Y'all just y'all y'all just coming in for for Eric? What she said. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Chestnuts roasting on an open bourbon. Let's oh, move on. Ooh, uh, now we're at cock. Yeah, chicken cock uh, is introducing a new small batch bourbon line. I'm sure it's going to be eight hundred dollars a bottle. <laughs> One hundred proof. Uh, Small Batch will join the brand's flagship rye, bourbon, and double oak whiskey as core products, each unique batch to be bottled and bond. Uh, the team at Chicken Cock Whiskey is back at it with another new release. This time they're adding, uh, they spelled, uh, that's the wrong form of there. Bourbon Lens, come on. Come on, uh, Bourbon Lens. Th <laughs> 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 uh, this time they're adding to their core lineup of products with the addition of a new Small Batch Kentucky Straight Bourbon. Small batch, uh, we know, uh, we know what small batch is. Uh, Greg Snyder is committed to a maximum batch size of ten barrels for each release. Best part is the new releases will all be bottled and bond. Uh, and ba 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 ba. Uh, seventy dollars per bottle. Well, that's not too bad. No, I don't mind that. Uh, five years old. No. Wait, what? Five years old? Is it a blend? Of six barrels. Okay. And bottled and bond. Bottled You're and bond. Job. You're doing a great job listening. How was uh promoting? Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I'm rusty, okay? You come onto the live stream and I immediately I'm just... rusty. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna share it to my story as well. Um I'd already planned on since we're getting closer to live uh, events trying to figure out when i could get on here and start doing more maybe we can do some special lives leading up to that so yeah we, we stay definitely tuned. should um we uh we we've had some uh <laughs> some major major uh developments in the live show over the past couple of days y'all ain't gonna uh, miss this you it's it's pretty massive all I'm going to say is there's somebody that you probably never thought would be a mutant on a podcast who's, by God, we're going to try to get him to be a mutant. So oh, that's all I'm saying. I mean, what do you mean try? Well, you know, I, I did have to sign that paper saying I wouldn't like physically do anything to this person. If eh, fair enough. So you know what I mean? Fair enough. I know what you mean. Um, but tickets just for the live show uh, are going to go on sale uh tomorrow Ooh so stay tuned stay tuned for that anyway um ba -ba -ba. uh so i'm not sure on the distribution on this uh i imagine it's going to be widespread uh oh look here it is online retailers such as caskers flaviar total wine and reserve bar or in stores wherever chicken cock whiskey's core products are Sold. Uh, they're made in partnership with Bardstown Bourbon Company, which I kind of uh, I kind of forgot about. All right, I know you're not prepared for this. We're gonna get I into am. a I am a, a slightly uh, a slightly more serious topic here. Okay. Um, well, I'm prepared. I'm prepared. And this one. This one threw me for a loop when I first saw it earlier today. <clears throat> oh, Judge rules. Kentucky distillery influenced union vote with free bottles of bourbon. Oh, that's Kentucky, baby. Hold on. Before I show you, before I show you who it is, do you have a guess as to which distillery might have done this? <sighs> Good times. No. Let me guess one more Bigger. Time. Bigger? Way bigger. Will it? 
Mm. Way bigger. Even bigger? Way bigger. Well, it's Kentucky. Jim Beam. Mm -hmm. Jim Beam. Joseph got it. It's Woodford. Of course. Of yeah. course. Is Woodford Wo bigger? Dude, Woodford's one of the biggest distilleries. It's so like, small, period. though, in like size. Like when you go yeah, there, but, it's small. But they are one of the largest producers. True. Of bourbon. People drink Woodford it from Reserve a straw. Distillery. All the time. <laughs> Woodford Reserve Distillery and Parent Brown Foreman have been ordered to recognize and bargain with a Teamsters affiliate after a judge found that the distillery unfairly influenced a 2022 unionization vote by handing out bottles of premium bourbon and pay bumps. <laughs> Excuse me. The National Labor Relations Board judge found that Louisville-based Brown Foreman committed serious violations of labor law. Just ahead of a November 2022 vote, the Versailles Distillery announced an across-the-board wage increase, changes to merit raise eligibility and vacation policies, and gave employees $30 bottles of Woodford Reserve Double O. <laughs> I was going to say, what was the bottle? And it was double oaked. Double oaked. It just was double, double oaked. oaked, not double yep. double. Yep, just double oaked. <sighs> Lord. Uh, before the free bourbon and benefits were announced, a majority of the 60 employees at the Kentucky Distillery Unit involved were leaning toward authorizing the unionization to increase wages, which managers knew, according to the NLRB. Uh, but at the election, held a week after Woodford Reserve e gave each employee a bottle of bourbon for exceeding an unannounced multi-month production goal, uh, the union inexplicably lost the election, according to the NLRB. Listen, if I'm doing a good job or doing something and all I get is a bottle of double oaked, I quit. I'm quitting. <laughs> I am quitting. Mike Green, he get. I know for a fact Mike Green takes Woodford to where he works and he bribes his uh, peers and his um, co-workers. <laughs> and his business is going under right now because he he refuses to give them anything more than Woodford. Well, I would quit. I would quit. I mean, what would you work you, for Mike Green or because you got Woodford? No, I don't work for Mike Green. Mike, Mike no, Green I mean, if you did, is, uh, I could never work for Mike Green. Um, no, if I got Woodford, what would you? Okay, let's let's re let's flip this. Okay. You you own a big business of some sort, um, and you're not doing many any... of them. Many of them also got raises. Joseph brings up a good point. Okay, uh, <laughs> you you are going to give your employees a bottle of bourbon. You know, you're not doing anything malicious. You're just, you know, what? I'm going to give you all some bourbon because you did good. What right. are you and getting? Bourbon, what gets, are you... bourbon gets handed out all the time. All the time. All the time. People do picks for their Christmas parties and stuff. But anyway, you're yeah. in this situation. What brand are you putting under the bus that gave you bottles to give to your employees? What? Sorry. What bottles am I like considering giving to people? Yeah. This is your story that we're reading. What brand did you work with to give them bottles? And what bottles were they? Um... I mean, I feel like the obvious answer is Blanton's. Okay. You know, do you, do you think that would hurt Buffalo Trace or they'd be fine? <laughs> I think Buffalo Trace in the end would be fine. Um, and here's, here's what likely is going to happen, especially with Brown Foreman. More than likely, they're going to get a slap on the wrist from the executives and they're going to say, don't do that again. True. And they're gonna they're gonna move on, all right? Because uh, I mean, the other uh, again, bourbon bottles as incentives or as treats get handed out all the time. Yeah. So this is not like by dash. Um, this is not something that people. It, it's it's not it's nothing new. It's just they got caught. Right. Honestly. And it looks really bad because it was done around a union vote, 
which like I mean I I'm I'm in favor of of unions you know but it just like it just looks really really shady yeah anyway sorry I was I was running on <clears throat> running on fumes there oh yeah Mike Green did take his team to will it <laughs> there we go that uh if if I remember correctly, they handed out raises, bennies, and bottles before the union vote in order to dissuade people from voting to join. Yeah, exactly. What's bennies? I don't know. Benefits. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Oh, man. I like how my son said bye to you and not me. Anyway. He's going to see you later. You better be uh, in it- <clears throat> Joe B. Lance, Vice President of Teamsters Local 651 and the lead organizer organizer uh, of the campaign said the ruling is historic in that it is one of the first to implement a new legal standard that allows the union to skip rerunning the election and go straight to bargaining. Uh, his goal, he said, is to catch liver sales distillery employees up to the pay, pay scale he's found at other Brown Foreman and Woodford County distilleries, including Wild Turkey and Four Roses. Uh, the ultimate goal is to make better lives for the people. Vance said, we're feeding our families too. Um, I'm I'm not going to get into too much. I'm not going to get into any of the nuance there. But um, anyway, uh, what Brown Foreman says, the distillery claimed the actions were for legitimate business reasons unrelated to the organizing campaign for the pending election. But in an April 8th decision, the judge found Woodford Reserve engaged in violative and objectionable conduct and ordered the distiller to recognize and bargain with the union as the chosen representative of the employees. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, it's just smarmy. It's just weird and gross, and I don't like it. And you should be taking care of your employees. <clears throat> anyway. Anyway. Uh gross maybe we'll talk about it more on the actual podcast other woodford workers are already union members i just wonder which like which members of the woodford team these that they were trying to dissuade from joining the union and which woodford workers were already part of a union you know what i mean like who 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 were they benefiting from not joining a union I don't know. I don't know. I'm curious. We'll find out. Hey, let's have some fun, shall we? Let's do fun stuff. Jim Beam's introducing four new Kentucky coolers ready to drink flavors. Crush? Crush. It's like a camel crush? (laughs) You crush it and like the flavor goes into it? (laughs) Hell yeah. (laughs) Uh, Orange Crush. Bright citrusy notes of orange complemented by a hint of sweetness and taste of bourbon. Peach crush, sweet and tangy, just like biting into a fresh peach, complementing the bourbon tasting notes. Blueberry lemonade, crisp, light flavors of lemon meet the taste of muddled blueberries and bourbon. And strawberry lemonade, tart and fruity, uh, the epitome of Sunday, uh, sunny day sipping and balance to the bourbon tasting notes. Say that three times fast. I can't. Okay. <laughs> I'm just going to straight up tell you. <laughs> Have you had any of these before? These no. Kentucky coolers? No. They're not that bad. We should we should do them for like a summer episode or a video oh, on yeah. YouTube where like yeah. we we get like an inflatable pool in your backyard. Okay. Like on a on a ridiculously sunny day. Let's do it. We'll do okay. like the where we cover just our nose in like uh, sunscreen. Yeah, like old school. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Um, Jim Beam Kentucky coolers are five percent ABV and one hundred and twenty calories per serving, with a suggested retail price of fifteen ninety nine for a twelve can variety pack. Fifteen for a twelve can? Yeah, mm-hmm. that's nice. No, 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 Don, you misunderstood. Not just our not just our nose is cover, covered. We just have our nose covered in sunscreen. And Joseph, he's he's still 
tore up about Woodford. He's still going on about Woodford there. <laughs> Woodford wisely chose not to hand these out to workers, the Kentucky coolers. <laughs> they get a couple in them and they go ham. <laughs> <laughs> Get Sorry. it out. Get it out. <clears throat> You've been smoking too much again. I know. Well. Um, I'm excited about this one. We might be uh we might be reviewing this well, sometime we soon. Over there. Overhaul. You know I can't stay away from my my you know my, my camel lights. Give me that crush. It's a lot fun making them my own cigarettes. Well, oh, this is Overholt? Yeah, this is a new Overholt. Overholt. Whiskey. Halt? Yeah. Halt? Holt. 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 Okay. Anyway. Uh, a Overholt straight rye whiskey. Monongahala mash. Say that one more time. Monongahala mash. What'd you call me? We're going to have words. Overholt holds the distinction of being one of the longest standing whiskey brands in the United States. It was founded in 1810 by Abraham Overholt in Scottsdale, Pennsylvania, and was one of the few distilleries to survive prohibition. <coughs> oh, man. It's a brand with a rich history to channel, and this latest edition is no different. A. Overholt is made with the same mash bill, 80% rye and 20% malted barley that Overholt used in 1810. Of course, it's been years since Old Overholt was made in Pennsylvania. It was acquired by Beam back in 1987 and production then shifted to Kentucky. Another legacy Pennsylvania rye, Rittenhouse, was acquired by Heaven Hill in 1999 and also, also saw production move down to Kentucky. Uh, they represent two surviving brands from Pennsylvania's rich rye past. Come on, water drum. Behind you. Uh, with its mash bill of 80% rye and 20% malted barley, the new A Overholt channels its old Monongahela roots, bottled at 47.5% ABV, retail nationwide at $40. It's part of the permanent Overholt lineup, which also includes Old Overholt 4-year-old, Old Overholt 4-year-old bottled and bond, and Old Overholt extra aged cast strength. Made by Master Distiller Freddie No at Jim Beam in Claremont, Kentucky. Hmm. I'm excited for this one. I, I think I hope Swan is too. Oh yeah, I mean the I got some old overhaul over there, and Swan gave it to me actually. Yeah. Which one? Uh, which one was it? Uh, what is it? One fourteen, or is there like a hundred? Yeah, there's a there's a one fourteen. Yeah, it's that one. So black bottle, white label. Yeah. Yeah. Old man on it. Yeah, they all they all got old men on them. <clears throat> uh, High West Boo Rise coming back. Okay. <laughs> Listen. Thanks for the ex thanks for the excitement. High West has let me down lately. Okay. Well, it's true. Who in the chats had a good High West lately? Tell me. Like a good, legit one. I don't know. No, I said who in the chat. Tell me. We tried one of the new... And mid, I'm telling you, I mid, don't know. mid One of those new Mid-Somners. Mid-Summer. mid No, mid, 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 no, mid -winter. What are you... You're, you're we, messing me up. We tried one of the new mid somners and it totally tasted like a bear on fire. It did taste like... Um, what do we say? Oh, it oh. tastes like... Potpourri. It was bad. Joe said he's not had a good one recently. Told you. Told so that's good. So we're on. We're on. Uh, we're off to a great start. Always. Yeah. Get them on the Wonderful. pod. Let's talk about it. This year's Boo Rye is a blend of straight rye and bourbon whiskeys, uh, aged for a minimum of ten years. Two ryes are in the blend. One is sourced from MGP. It is 95.5, and the other is Own Make from High West Wine Ship Distillery that's made from 80% rye and 20% malted rye. As for the bourbons in the blend, one comes from MGP and uses a mash bill of 75% corn, 21% rye, and 4% malted barley. And the second is sourced from Kentucky and made from a mash bill of 78% corn, 10% rye, and 12% malted barley. 
Hold up. That's just Heaven Hill, isn't it? But weren't they using their own? Oh, I'm so confused. They were using their own stuff there for a while. And I think maybe that's what bore people complaining. <clears throat> and now they went back to this. I don't know. I don't know. I'm kind of um, I'm kind of interested in this now. Yeah, if you're a longtime Burai fan, you will have to make out uh, make the trip out to Park City, Utah, to get this whiskey, where it's available at the High West uh, Saloon for 125 dollars. Hmm. Say the proof. I can't read. Um, I'm not no. seeing the proof anywhere. I have a 2019 Burai. We should try it. Do you? Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm not able to make out the proof anywhere. So, I think it's like 95, 100. Uh, back to Woodford. Oh boy, they have unveiled uh the 150th Kentucky Derby Rose Mint Julep. This is the, uh, it's the expensive mint julep that they do every year. Like you get right. the big gold cup or whatever. Yeah, this one's five thousand dollars this year. Not bad. Not bad. Yeah, uh, there's one that's also a thousand dollars. Okay, that's so. even better. Okay, yeah, one. Sure. I mean, a glass and some a mint julep. <laughs> I don't know what that means, Mike. <laughs> it means he paid too much, so he's trying to make himself feel better about it. Uh, his mid, his mid somner. He likes. But I'm biased when I pay too. Oh, he's but tr- I'm biased. Okay. Yeah. Is he tanked? Probably. Okay. He's always tanked. Um, In the lead up to the 150th run for the Roses, Woodford Reserve and Brown Foreman have unveiled their annual charity mint julep offerings. This year, two different cups are available for purchase with proceeds benefiting a nonprofit organization near and dear to Churchill Downs. Uh, maybe they'll name what it is. Oh, they do. Okay. Uh, for this... Wait. That's a, uh, that was a good deep- horse sound. For full details on the unique silver and gold julep cups, including... Okay, well, just just let us read through it, then. Don't tell me to... Been drinking. Thanks, Mike. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, bu- 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 celebrates the 150th. A total of 300 rare julep cups have been created to mark the historic occasion. Each features the iconic twin spires of Churchill Downs adorned in either emeralds or crystals. Hmm. Let's see if we can get a better look at this picture. They ugly. <laughs> you know I'm looking at these on our monitor, right? So you know they look real bad. Oh, on our... Uh, here. They look Let me text real them to bad. You. No, I can see it on my computer right here, too. I'm looking at both. Oh, okay. But you know, I look straight at it. and It's, it's yeah. pretty. It's pretty. It's... It's not good. It's not good. Um, how many people actually buy those? I don't. I I think that I think more people than you would imagine. Oh, okay. If Woodford sends one to Eric, I'll vote no. <laughs> He'll vote no on the union. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm part of this. <laughs> I'm going to be in the news tomorrow. That's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh. We'll pause for a cough break there from Perry. If you want to... Uh, Sorry, I'm good. Support the show. You can go to patreon.com slash my burn pot for as little as a dollar a month. You can support the show. And at $5, you get all the bonus stuff. And that's the best stuff. So do that. And we're back. Yep. Uh, They have provided the the recipe for the mint julep, too. So you can literally make your own. Yeah, but it won't be in the expensive cup. Two ounces of Woodford Reserve Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, which was given to the members of the board so that they would vote against the union. 
<laughs> you they give you the bottle to bribe you to pay for the cup. Yeah, one teaspoon of rose infused honey simple syrup. Okay. Uh, the recipe for the honey simple syrup is down here. <laughs> Six mint leaves, miniature rosebuds for garnish. And then uh, you wipe mint leaves inside a julep cup, expressing the flavors and fragrances. Mm. Drop the leaves in the cup. Add rose-infused honey simple syrup, crushed ice, and Woodford Reserve bourbon to the cup. Garnish with mint and miniature rosebuds. I'm 100% honest when I say I do not like a mint julep. I don't either, but that will be $5,000. Yeah, I'd do it for that, though. Would you? Yeah. I'll try it for that. That's not a bad price. <clears throat> try it for that. I'll try it for that, you know? All right. Beautiful. Just It is. It's gorgeous. Ugly. Uh, speaking of expensive bottles you'll never get to try, <laughs> send me the recipe and I'll send you two girls one cup. <laughs> Joke. You'll send them? Bro. <laughs> I think he means we got the means link. Everybody's got he means the he'll link. Send us the link. Yeah, it's twenty twenty four. Didn't they fake that video? Yeah, twenty twenty four. Joe, we all have the link, bro. It ain't secret anymore. Yeah. What's this book of bourbon here? Rabbit hole. Latest founders collection. Fifteen year old bourbon and Mizanara cask. Hmm. Uh, fast facts on rabbit hole founders collection Mizanara. Uh, it's finished in the Mizanara for okay. uh, 11, uh, 11 months. Mm-hmm. 103.8 proof, 15 years old. 2,200 bottles. $1,500. Only? Only. Only 1500 So you could have one mint julep or... Or this a bottle. bottle <laughs> a bottle of bourbon from... What are y'all choosing? <laughs> Put, drop it in the chat. What are y'all choosing tonight? <laughs> 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 you high rollers. Uh, I'm going to flip a coin. and <laughs> Which am I going to pick? Anyway, if you want to read about the Mizanara, um, it's here on the Bourbon Lens website. But anyway, uh, that's an expensive bottle. <clears throat> You know, they could have at least gone higher than 103 proof. <laughs> I feel I'm, like proof. I'm sure there's I'm sure there's something they would tell you that's like why we chose 103 proof because it represents the long history of what bourbon was to rabbits back in the day. When we put them in boxes, the 103 proof shone through bright through the pages. I'm not seeing anything. Okay, never mind. Yeah, anyway. I must have read that somewhere else. <clears throat> All right, some quick labels, then we get to talking and drinking about uh, Green River. Ezra Brooks in 99. Hmm. Uh, this is a port wine cask finished. Uh, finished in port cask from Portugal for four, uh, six months. Mash bill of 78% corn. 10% rye and 12% malt. Okay. New variant will start shipping to retailers next, uh, or later this month, rather. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, here we I go. West again. Your favorite. Butterfly. Bourbon, come, my bourbon lady. whiskey. Come, come, my lady. <clears throat> You're my butterfly. Sugar, baby. How is <laughs> Uh Finished in red wine barrels blended with red wine. It's called the Prisoner Share, and it's uh, 80 proof. Hmm. 80 Blended proof. with red wine, though. Oh, so it's not even like whiskey. Yeah. Interesting. I don't know what that would be like. A spirit. Rab- Rabbit Hole is in the same group with Yellowstone and Jefferson's as very meh whiskeys. I would, I, I would, uh, I would agree with that. I think. Sure. Yeah. Uh, Dad's Hat Rosen Rye, Pennsylvania Rye Whiskey, ninety proof. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Heaven, 
Heaven Hill, grain to glass rye whiskey, seven years old. Uh, 63% rye, 24% corn, 13% malt to barley, 125 proof. What is this? I don't know what the purpose of this is. <clears throat> What's the grain to glass gimmick? I don't know. Oh. But there's also a bourbon. Oh. 35% rye, 52% corn, 13% malted barley. I'll say about this, um, it, that's a that's a different um, that's a different mash bill from what they normally use. Okay. 107 proof as well. Maybe we'll get a little sample of that. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. I, I just don't know what this is supposed to be. Grain to glass. Yeah. So we'll find out soon. I really like the label, though. <clears throat> it's not that it's completely different from the bottom of the label, bond. but yeah. um, I mean, overall, it's nice. Uh, and then speaking of Yellowstone, finally, Kentucky Straight Bourbon. Uh, this is their limited edition for 2024. Uh, finished in cognac and brandy casks. So instead of their um, typical uh, one finish or one uh, cask finish that they do for their limited releases, this one's going to be uh, two. Hmm. So. Cool. Any guesses on where they're sourcing the 17 year from? Why? How do we know it's 17 years from? Oh, cause Perry. Oh, here we go. <clears throat> we offer for 2024, we offer a delicately balanced blend of seven year and 17 year old bourbons. Are they separate or this is the blend, a seven and a 17 year old? I'm guessing it's a blend, but I'm also wondering if like the seven years finished in the cognac and the 17s in the brandy, or they do some of both and then hmm. the blend. I don't know. Interesting. I don't know. I'm very confused by that. But regardless, that's the news. Here we are. Here we are. Talking about um, Green River. Okay. Okay. Which uh, <clears throat> has... <coughs> I'm, I'm dying. Are you okay? <laughs> Here we go. Joe said, overpriced me. Mm. I will say, though, I, I do think that Yellowstone's limited releases are the best products that they have to offer. No? Yes? Maybe? I've, I've, I don't even know if I've had any, other than what you've let me try. Really? Yeah. I don't have any. I mean, I, I didn't think you had any, but I thought for sure you'd try it. At least a few of them. I've never even... No. Never. Hmm. Well. Sorry. Okay. Well, that's a shame. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, let's talk about Green River a little All bit. Right. What, um, what bottles did you have available to you? <laughs> <laughs> what <laughs> i didn't see nothing allegedly <laughs> um Actually, i don't i haven't had any of that in a minute i'm gonna i don't i don't i you know i finished the bottle that uh i've had two bottles um i've had the bourbon and the weeded bourbon um, and we have both finished those. I have a bottle here that I've heard rumors that it may have been sourced from there. I'm not going to confirm or deny anything, but I'm going to kind of base my, uh, my palate tonight on that. And I will listen along as you taste what you have. Okay. <laughs> Brian. Hello, Brian. The best product they had to offer was the barrel co uh, co copper. Do you mean Coop Cooper? Who's copper? Copper and Kings. I'm confused. I don't know. 
Cooper. There we go. Cooper. So I, I think he meant. I think he meant Todd Cooper. Todd Cooper. Maybe. Cooper Trooper. The Cooper Land. Dang autocorrect. There we go. Here's some news. Woodenville will be releasing an eight-year, 100-proof bourbon later this summer. Interesting. I look forward to trying it eventually. If only we knew somebody that was close to Woodenville. <laughs> Surely we do. But anyway. Sure. Um, so I've got the the rye bourbon, the weeded bourbon, the rye whiskey, and that uh, foolproof single barrel from them as well. I'll make sure I don't have any more. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'm out. Yeah, I think we finished everything on pours on the floor. Yep. <laughs> But anyway, we, um, I, I mean, <clears throat> before they became Green River as we know them now, uh, and they were Ozzy Tyler, <laughs> we had a pretty rocky start with, uh, that. Yeah, that, that was, wasn't a thing that we really enjoyed. Uh, that was before I was even on the podcast, and I tried some of that just for fun. I like where they are now compared yeah. to then. Yeah. Now, for anybody who doesn't know, too, they were a heritage brand right up until... Um, <clears throat> I mentioned it because of the new Riff 8 year. Oh, the Woodenville 8 year. He mentioned it because of that. Lost my shit. Okay. I love it. I love New Riff. I'll lose it all the time. I mean, I'm... I'm well, bring it. I'm give us some, the Joseph. Window. Let's... Comp- we'll put them head to head. Better I'm be excited alive. about the, the Woodenville. I am too. He's saying that's the reason he mentioned it. I know. Because we're going to put them to the test. We're going to battle them out. And we're going to put the uh, Wilderness Trail eight year in there. And we're going to have a triple threat match. Ooh. Cage match. Yep. Also, hi, Emily. Hi, Emily. <clears throat> are we uh, officially Late doing our... If. Are we doing our uh, our pairing tomorrow? Yes. Is a spoiler? Yes. Okay. I'm looking at the <laughs> bottle that I'm pairing with it right now, actually. Emily, I, I apologize for not reminding Eric. I should have should have done my part. And I'm sorry. But, anyway... Uh, it looks like we got some more folks uh, popping in as well. Thank you all Let's so much party. for being here. Been been live for a while, and uh, it's good to good to have you guys along. Um, <clears throat> but uh, Green River, I mean, technically they were around in Owensboro, Kentucky, as a distillery right up until Prohibition, and they were shut down. Um, when OZ Tyler was coming up in the world, they were doing uh, not only distilling for themselves, but they were doing contract distilling for other uh, brands, just kind of under the radar. Uh, but, <clears throat> you know, the, the question that everybody was asking uh, was, well, if they're doing all of this distilling for them themselves and other people, why are they doing all of this terra pure, this, this hyper... Uh, or, or, you know, hyper aging. Yeah. <clears throat> why, why are they trying to quickly age things overnight? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and you know, they kept getting such vicious backlash <laughs> over and over and over again. Um, what do I got to do to re- what do I got to do to be a regular besides a barrel ring streak? I mean, no. that's it. That's the best. That's, all. that's it. That's all you got to do. You could like comment and review on everything and we'll just read everything out. Yeah, exactly. I don't know what else to tell you. <laughs> but then a few years ago, I mean, Green River took a hard left turn rebranded uh to 
basically an old brand uh, gave themselves a facelift and uh, took things in a much better direction uh, and stopped doing their insane uh, Terra Pure nonsense. And uh, here we are today, but um, <clears throat> it, it's, I think it's kind of weird to see <clears throat> a brand that got so much negativity and so much hate react in a way like that and not just like stick to their guns in the way that other brands have and actually re uh that and actually like course correct yeah i mean yeah i don't know like part of me wishes part of me wishes they would have just been like oh yeah people going to hate on us at this let's keep the name and let's show them what we can do but also mm -hmm. on the other side of things it's smart it's like okay we didn't just give up and just stop okay let's re rebrand redo this and put out a really good product which they did yeah. i kind of wish i kind of wish they would come out with like a oz tyler like a, a limited release that's like yeah. legit good that mm -hmm. would be fun. That would be fun. I, w I definitely would enjoy that, but <clears throat> I I don't think that it is a bad thing that they did what they did. I just think no. it's kind of funny in some ways um, that that brand got wiped off the map so efficiently. <laughs> you think we can find some still? Somewhere. I'm sure in like a, you know, like some random liquor store attached to a gas station. I'm on. That. You know what I mean? That's what I'm hunting somewhere. For. Yeah. Uh, Pop Ritter's in the chat. We could all use a facelift. Papa Ritter, the undisputed universal champion. <laughs> Did you watch any of uh, WrestleMania? By the way, I watched it all, both nights. Nice. Yeah, you I had to. I had, tomorrow, I guess. Yeah, I had to watch it on uh, delay because I was uh, Cowboy Bebop the second night. But oh yeah, that's right. I did watch it all. So, yeah. well, I don't want to spoil anything for the actual podcast. Dad said it was so good. It was real good. No such thing as a good OZ Tyler. I thing. I have to agree. I'm gonna find one. I'm going to prove everyone wrong. Isn't the Duke an old OZ Tyler bottle? The Duke. I don't know. Got to go take a Duke. <laughs> Is that how you announce you're done with being on the... <laughs> All right, I'm done. Got to go take a Duke. I gotta See y'all later. Duke, everybody. See you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I just remove you from the stream. Yep. I'm gone. Um... <clears throat> Here's my question. Do you think that there is a a weak spot in their their current lineup right now? Um I mean everything that we've had is solid. Like the rye, the weeded, the barrel strength, um or the barrel strength single barrel. Is it barrel proof or barrel strength? The uh they call it full proof. Full proof. Either way. Um oh, the, the John proof. Wayne bottle. Um, okay. There's nothing, it's a very solid lineup. There's nothing that sticks out as amazing. And I think I would like to see like some sort of like, I don't know, like a, like a really good limited green river. Um, I'm not trying to advocate for more overpriced allocated bourbons, but I think when you have a solid lineup like that as a brand, the next step is to put out something that's a little harder to get. That's a little like a step above the rest, if that makes sense. Yeah. I think that's what yeah. they're lacking. I think they have a very solid lineup. I think they're just lacking that really like blow your balls off bottle. Yeah, I, I, I think I mostly agree with you. Also, Cheech is in the chat. Cheech. It's good to see you, buddy. I hope you're doing all right. 
Hope that you're uh, hanging in there with your recovery and everything. Whee! Cheech is just two. Two. Whee! Yeah. Oh. Right. What are you my doing? Light, my light fell. Hold on. Remember when my light fell on you last week? That was fun. Um, like Perry said earlier, why he's fixing his light, be sure to look for the live show tickets, which are going to go on sale this week. It's turning into something a little bit more than usual. I won't lie. Um, very different I, from, I'm very excited. Years. I feel like we finally figured out exactly what we wanted this to be like. And yeah, it's finally coming together. And it's kind of rejuvenated us because if you've listened to the podcast or you've been on Patreon or the Discord, you know we were a little, little, little depressed, a little down about stuff. But we had a moment of clarity, and things are looking up. Um, and this yeah. is probably going to be one of the best things we put on. So, yeah, stay tuned. Hands down, hands down. So. Uh, yeah, live show tickets going on sale tomorrow. Uh, we've been finalizing details uh, over the past, really, 24 hours. Um, so be on the lookout for that. All social media channels, uh, probably around noon or 1 o'clock, uh, that will get posted. So stay tuned. Um, but cannot wait to share those <laughs> those details with you guys uh it's it's big it's different it's it's gonna blow your mind i think it is it is so it's gonna be a good time yeah no joke it'll be yeah. a good time yeah um anyway i do agree with you i think they have a really solid lineup um i think the only thing that i would really like to see is I think I would like to see... Well, first of all, no, we're not going <laughs> to... Dad thinks we're going to do pyro yeah, uh, for the live show. A little bit. <laughs> I didn't tell you about that yet. I'll tell you later. Oh, okay. We think we're going to get... We're going to be able to go back to base 110 after we do the... Uh, after we have the fire dancers. We're going to start in the parking lot. <clears throat> okay, cool. Um, I think the weakest point in their lineup... And it's not by a whole lot, but I think it's an it think it's noticeable enough. But their their weeded bourbon is easily the noticeably it's the least developed out of the four. And I think really it's it's mostly because I, I mean it just lacks complexity. It's harder. You know? We I've said this so many times. Yeah. It's harder to get a weeded bourbon to turn out good, especially one that's not hitting that eight to ten year mark. Yeah. Um, and it's just a thing. Like, and that's you can say all you want, but like we have had our fair share of young weeded bourbon. We've had our fair share of good, and there's only a few that can do it younger. Um, and then, but. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard to make a good, young, weeded bourbon. And what is it, four years old? Four to six? I don't know. And some people, have pulled it, some people have pulled it out. Like, I mean, we know. WT. Danville. Um, and then everything else is usually about seven to ten years Um Samoan knife throwers? Yes. Ex Spoiler alert. Yes. I will be fire dancing and we will be having Samoan knife throwers. Um, Non-age stated, of course, but aged at least four years. So, a young weed of bourbon. The assumption. Yeah. You better be coming, Mike Green. I hope so. May 25th, 6 o'clock, be there or be dumb. I'd rather be a knife thrower versus a knife catcher. 
Who's this guy? Have you still not watched any of Shogun? Mm -mm. I watched the first episode. Oh, okay. But I got sidetracked yep. with anime. No, it's, I mean, it. I watched it at a time where I was like on a roll of like four new shows and I had to, I had to make a sacrifice and I'd say, what am I going to finish before I go on to the next? I, I mean, I think I've heard the point, latest episode is insane. I, we're, we're two episodes behind. I think at this point you're better off waiting because there's only two episodes left. I might as well just wait um, and binge the whole thing. Yeah. But I just watched the latest episode of uh, Bad Batch today. Papa Ritter watched the old miniseries. I I want to I want to go back and watch the old one. Now that we've been watching this one, um, honestly, this is some of the best TV I've seen in a while. Um, it's a it's amazing. It's on Hulu for anybody who uh, hasn't watched it or is interested in watching it. Um, but oh man. It's so good. Uh, what were we talking about? Uh, for your weeded bourbon. Yeah, that, that's that's the the weakest out of the out of the four, for sure. Um, of course, I I like the higher proof on the the full proof single barrels, but I really think that the the rye. I think I like Oddly the rye is the out best of best one out of them. Yeah. You should pour up some of the foolproof because that's pretty much what I got to. Watching the old Shogun is what, like watching the old It. That's funny. I I mean, I've never seen the old the old Shogun before. I seen Wolf and Cub. I've not seen Wolf and Cub, no. You should. Okay. I will put it on my list. That's it's dying. also it's also Masters Weekend. I don't know that. It's my nickname at work, old it <laughs> Don. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Uh, man. Um well I I mean I've got the the full proof, but I've also got that undisclosed it's a foolproof it's basically yeah a single barrel it's a foolproof single barrel yeah the color though what's okay before you start what on the actual green river foolproof what's the uh proof on it 119 so the the other foolproof we are drinking is um golly the color is so different it's 117. 117.1. It's still good. It's still good. Oh, um, on the live show, I wanted to mention this year we're going to do giveaways throughout the show. And I mm -hmm. think I'm going to put together a, um, a Tim Bip single barrel uh, sample kit in one of the a uh, couple of samples of all the uh, picks I still have uh, that we've done over the years. Um, the giveaway we're going to do like that. We'll have a bottle that you can get. Um, we'll have some, uh, maybe a t-shirt or two. We'll have, I think I got like a, a Perry Russell. I'll put it in a frame, the poster nice. behind us, stuff like that all throughout the night. Um, something a little different than we've done before. So stay tuned for that. Nice. Does this smell better or the same than you remember? Cause it's been a while since I've had this too. I, honestly, I think it smells better. I think this thing has got so good. It's got even better. It is. It's, it's still it's only. It's only improved. Oh, Joe says only if funky nerds are included. Uh, yeah, I can do a little bit of that. It may be the. 
it may be the sample bottle that's like half full, but you'll get some. Yeah. You can get pop ritters. Oh, we got the eyebrow too. What the ten bits cooking? Um, it smells like banana foster now. It did smell more like a sweet um banana, like a Sunday banana and ice cream. It smells darker. It smells like banana foster. Yeah. And I will say the foolproof, uh, the other foolproof green river we had smelled dark and fruity to me too. I remember. And it, and it still does. Yeah. It's, it's still very much that, but in, in comparison, I want to, I want to check out the rye real quick too. Okay. It's funny because, I don't, and I'm not sure what the rye mash bill is, but going to it specifically, it's like nothing but rye. <laughs> Are you looking it up right now? Yeah. Green River Rye. Green River Rye. Yes, I'm over 35 years old. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 95 proof. Mash bill, 95.5. Really? Yep. 95 rye, 5% malted barley. You tell me. Okay, this is fun. I've got their tasting notes on their website pulled up. I want you to tell me what you think it looks like. I'm gonna, they got taste, appearance, finish. So what do you say this looks like to you in a glass? What it looks like? Appearance. What's the appearance? Um, We're going to see if you can get close to their tasting notes. Which appearance is not? I'm going to say it like appearance, like a light copper. Rich auburn, polish mahogany. Mahogany. Um, okay. On the palate, what do you get? Ooh, this is a good tasting note. They did good. Kind of want some now. Maple. Mm hmm. Mint leaves. Close, okay. Hold on. Who writes this? If ever there were such a, a a thing as a cherry candy cane. Okay. I can see this. Okay. They, this is good. Orange peel, fresh spearmint. So you got the mint, you got the kind of the candy cane. Black pepper, a touch of black pepper uh, through vanilla and graham cracker. Mm. Okay. I like that. And then finish. They have a finish on here. What do you get on the finish? I wasn't really paying attention to the finish. Hold on. Um... If I read this finish, it doesn't sound like it has a, a big finish. It's a very. Yeah, it's like it, it's it's mostly sweet. I get like honeysuckle and like marshmallow cream. Oh, I like yours better. Uh, a sound medium finish with a slight rye spice, herbal tea and soft oak notes. So that's what they say yeah. about there. It's not it's not blowing me away. It's not blowing your balls off. No, not okay. particularly. That palette, though, sounds delicious. 
It's good, man. It's good. I'll I'll bring a couple of these over tomorrow. Um, I'd especially like for you to try the uh, the two full proofs <clears throat> up next to each other. Anyway, back but, to this one. Yeah. Mm. What happened? Do what? What's going on? Huh? Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. I hear it. There was a weird like bump or something that seemed like you couldn't. <laughs> back? And we're back. Yeah. No. Ouch. Okay. What's going on, Dad? You good? Ouch. Yeah. He's Viking saying... bourbon. Howdy, folks. Cheers. Viking bourbon? Do you bike in bourbon? Howdy, folks. Um, yeah, I I think the foolproof is where it's at. That would be if right now where I would go. Next, next is the rye, then the rye bourbon, and then the weeded. Yeah. And they need that special bottle. Yeah. I kind of feel like they would benefit from that is good. There we go. Uh, they would benefit from not completely copying, but at least in some ways. Mimicking... <clears throat> no, I was thinking more along the lines of. Uh, Jim, Jim Beam with the Knob Creek line. Oh, okay. I thought you were going to say like a batch, foolproof batch A something, batch B something, batch C something. I mean, maybe, but I also wouldn't mind seeing like, because I think that this this foolproof single barrel idea is really interesting, but I haven't seen it outside of like these picks. Yeah. So, and, and it, it's not, again... Like, it's not that it has to be 120 proof. They can keep it at 119 as long as it's a really solid bourbon. But, you know, make it a shelf staple. Do the same thing with the the rye and the, the weeded bourbon as well. So that they have these, these counterparts that they can offer um, and keep... <coughs> for people to you know i just looked up the uh on their website the uh the single barrel the foolproof cast strength whatever it is 70 percent corn 21 percent rye nine percent malted barley and look at the uh the single barrel you have well how about that how about that how about that Good stuff. It's good stuff. Can't complain about it. So, if you were at Tim Bip weekend last year and you... Never mind. Um... <laughs> you didn't see anything. You didn't see anything. <laughs> <laughs> Pull that bottle out. Have some. Drink along with it. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm curious to try the, uh, the bottles you have tomorrow. Maybe we'll do that on pregame chats tomorrow. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think, yeah. I think they just need, they need that hitter. They need that something special. And as long as they keep it reasonably priced and just a little bit different than the regular lineup, it'll be okay. But don't try to yeah. go crazy. Don't be like we're putting out a you know a three hundred dollar finished in cognac or whatever and throw it out there. Yep. Yeah, go give For us sure. you know a little bit more price. Yeah, that's fine. Maybe a little bit older. Maybe something a little different, toasted or something. Well, and that's not to say that I wouldn't like to see a yearly or you know biannual limited release from them either. You know, I, I mean. Get a get a eight year, ten year age stated 
you know what they could do? They could take I their weeded bourbon. weeded bourbon and they could do a 90% weeded bourbon. They could do a 107% weeded bourbon. They could do a 12 year weeded bourbon and they could do a foolproof weeded bourbon. It's never been done. They could have a thing where you can create your own weeded bourbon. It's never been done. <laughs> <It's never> been... <laughs> right? Okay. Well, red, green label, black label, red label, blue label. You said percent in there. Hmm? You said percent. 107%. I'm just saying that's what they could do. I I know, but... So you're just going to double down, huh? Saying that's what they could do. Okay. Well, good luck with that. <laughs> well, they, could they could. I'm not saying that they should. It's a possibility. Or, I mean, if they they want to know what I think. That's if they what I, wanna, think. I mean, I, I, you know what I'm hearing? They need a mutant marketing team. They need a mutant, mutant marketing. marketing. Mutant marketing. Coming soon. Great. What? What's your logo going to be? Um, you got time. Don't worry about it. Feastables? Like you're no, just gonna use it, you're just gonna use the it's Mr. Beast Feastables logo. Marketing and it's gonna have chocolate and candy and stuff crashing around it. That's it. Okay. Well how what much is money wrong you, with this? How much money do you have in case you get sued? Twenty three dollars. Surely that's enough. Uh, that'd be fine. But Green River. If you want uh, to be the first client of Eel Mill Mutant Marketing, let me know. I've already got a business plan for you. It's going to com- propel your weeded bourbon to the top. <clears throat> hey, did you think it was crazy that um, on that? Um, The same day that OJ died, the the killer died too. Um, I heard that the Bills curse is finally lifted. Really? Yeah, I've heard that that was the curse. It's lifted. Wow. We're gonna win the Super Bowl this year. Man, go Bills! Is that because you uh, traded? Um, no. What's his name? Doesn't have anything to do with dicks. It has everything to do. Allegedly. Do you know what I'm saying? No. Don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. That was one of the funniest bits from this week's episode. And it was it's so funny going back and watching you going. That was so stupid. <laughs> Well, we'll see it again tomorrow. <laughs> we will see it again tomorrow. But I think we've done all we can on this week's live stream. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you for hanging out with us. Uh, <clears throat> go and follow live us on social media. Show. Live show. Live show, baby. Mm-hmm. Those tickets um, go hang on sale out. tomorrow. Hang out for the night. If, I think we can say this, if, for some reason, you can only come to the live show, but you want to stay the night and you need a, a place to stay. We have some discount rates. Mm-hmm. That's just for the room. No VIP stuff, but 
you need a place to stay that night because you want to partake a little bit more, let us know. Let us know. It's true. That does it. See y'all next time. Till then, I'm Perry. I'm Eric. And this is 10-Bip Live. That's comedy. (laughs) (laughs) Spoon with Eric Donashita. Yes, that is perfectly fine.